Hey everybody, it's Gino Robert from Electronic Musician Magazine. I'm here with a special announcement. We have here Apple Logic Pro 10. As you would expect, Logic Pro 10 includes a number of new features. And in this preview, I'll touch on a few things that I find very exciting. Right off the bat, it's worth noting that Logic Pro 10 costs only $199.99 for the full program and all of its content. And it is available as a download from the App Store. The Logic Pro 10 app download itself is only 651 megabytes, but the mandatory content install after that is about another additional two gigabytes of stuff. The total sound library is roughly 38 gigabytes, but this is an optional a la carte download. It's also triggered automatically if you open a project that uses content not yet installed and intelligently downloads the right bundle. But I recommend you grab it all because it really enhances the experience of using Logic especially if you're using the program to develop songs uh, or uh, demo projects using samples and uh, instrumental tracks. Logic Pro 10 is a Mac-only sequencer that is fully 64-bit under the hood and it requires 64-bit audio units plugins. You also need to be running Mountain Lion, that's OS 10 10.8.4 or later, as your operating system. So let's have a look at some of the, what I think are uh, Logic Pro 10's most interesting features. The first feature we'll look at is called Drummer. So I'm going to open up a new project from one of their templates, which this one, Electronic, will open up a collection of uh, software plugin instruments. And then I'm going to create a new track. Now notice up here that I have a choice of a software instrument, external MIDI track, audio track, guitar or bass track, or this one called Drummer. I'm going to choose that one and go ahead and say Create. What that gives me is a special instrument called Drummer. And it, is, uh, it allows you to select one of 15 virtual drummers that plays a part based on a number of user-friendly and musically meaningful settings. So I click on the rock icon. I have my choice of different four different styles. In this case, we'll go ahead and click rock. And it gives me a photograph and a bio of, in this case for rock, five different players. I'll go ahead and click on Logan because it looks like he's a rocker. Um, and it tells me that Logan is inspired by legendary drum heroes of the past and so forth. And he has the Rock Retro Kit. So he already has a kit assigned to him. And there is the kit. That's great. And we will raise it up here. When I go ahead and hit the playback button, we will hear Logan's kit. Okay, so that looks very much like a library. Um, in this case, it is more than a library. What it offers is a selection of patterns, but the patterns are intelligently handled by Logic based on the settings you have down here. Of course, you have presets. I can select AM Gold, which will play a slightly different preset. It's hi-hat heavy. Double Live, which is going to be cymbal heavy. I can choose uh, something, let's see, Tom Heavy. This is Stonehenge. And you can see here that the toms are lit up on the picture of the drum set here. So the object here is figuring out what instruments you want to hear. And this XY pad is very interesting. It, on the uh, top and bottom, it shows uh, soft and loud. Or I should say loud and soft. And on the left and right axis, uh, simple and complex. So this allows me to dial in a drum performance that matches the music that I'm trying to create. So instead of having to program fills and whether the hi-hat gets busier or simplifies during a part, this drummer track does that for me based on the position of this yellow ball in this matrix, based on the preset I've chosen, and based on these aspects here. I can select, okay, if I've got a tom-heavy part, how much tom is used in the pattern is based here. How much the kick and snare are involved is here. And if I want percussion such as tambourine, hand claps, or maracas is based here, and I can dial in a certain amount. Then I can dial in how much of the pattern is, involves fills and how much swing is involved. So I'll go back to my AM Gold. It's a pretty straight ahead pattern. I'm going to uh, simplify it and make it soft so it sounds a little bit different. You'll see the screen redraws every time I move this ball. If you watch that screen up there, 
as I go into a more complex pattern, it starts to add more and more instruments. And as I stretch this pattern out for the length of how many bars, uh, it'll fill that in. And if I, this is on a region to region basis. So this is all one region. region. If I shorten the region and duplicate it, what will happen is it'll put transitions between those regions, and then I can make these changes uh, in each region so that going from one region to another, it'll put a fill, and I'll demonstrate that next. Okay. So if you're looking up here, you can see that I have my intro. I'm choosing AM Gold. In my second region, it goes to the B-side program, and I've got cymbals cranked up right here, but down to you know a lower set. I'm going to crank them up a little higher so I hear more cymbals. You'll see that up there it begins to change depending on what my symbol amount of symbols I want, either a lower amount or a full amount. And if I go back to my original region here, I'm going to simplify that. So in this region, it starts out simple. And then when it goes to the second region, you'll hear that it gets busier. So let's go ahead and listen to that. So very simple snare and bass. From hi-hat now goes to cymbals and cranks up a little bit. Now, that's a great way to start a song. You kind of get an idea. You can put some guitar over it. And then if you find that as your guitar pattern is evolving, you want to change this, it's no problem. You go back and you just move the little ball. You can select different instruments and it'll all adapt and start to fill in the stuff that you've dialed in here. And what's very interesting about this is it picks these patterns and it picks these fills based on a huge library of content they've created. So you'll never hear really the same thing again. Every, every time you change one of these things, there's so many uh, possibilities that it will really change and feel more organic than say just having a sample library and lowering the volume of one instrument and so forth. Okay, so down here in the lower end, next to the kick and snare button, there's a button called follow. When you click the follow box, the drummer will derive their part from another instrument in the arrangement, just like a real drummer might play, say, their kit, kick drum along with the bass guitar part. And this follow feature works very well, in fact. So if I had a bass part here, I could have uh, the bass drum and, kick, and the snare drum following that part, or maybe, say, uh, the organ part or something, or maybe you know, some other instrument that makes sense. And I can, of course, change this on a region-to-region -region basis. Then I also have... Uh, this little area of swing, if I want to increase swing in the part, you can see that these, uh, the different bass and drum parts, the bass drum and snare move together. And then I can increase the number of fills by, or the, the length of the fill, uh, by increasing that amount there. In Logic Pro 10, the instruments have what are called smart controls. These smart controls come up for plugins and instruments, and they give you a handy control over important aspects of the sound. And of course, you can assign these controls to a MIDI controller, you can automate them, and you can even control them with an iPad using the free Logic Remote app, which we'll talk about in a second. So in this case, I've changed uh, projects, and I've got another drummer and another drum set, and my smart controls are up, and it allows me to change the mix very easily with each cymbal, uh, or sorry, each uh, instrument at a time. It also gives me uh, a single control for turning on compression and dialing in the amount of compression I want on the overall mix. And it gives me two controls over effects. It gives me a sort of tone control and the amount of room. So these are a higher level of control over aspects of whatever instrument you're using. So if you've got, um, let's have a look at the classic electric piano. If you can see the electric piano has uh, the kind of things you would see, say on a Wurlitzer or on a Fender Rhodes. You've got the bell volume, you've got treble and bass controls, you've got a drive control to give it some grit, uh, the LFO rate on and the intensity on a sort of a vibrato or a movement of the sound, that sort of thing. So each of these instruments has its own uh, set of smart controls. This is the upright bass, which basically gives you a low and mid EQ setting, as well as delay and ambience and reverb control. So a very intuitive way to work with each instrument. So if, if this is uh, your first time working with the DAW, again, this is a very musical way of approaching uh, tuning the sound. But in this case for the drums, it just gives us a kind of an overview of something, uh, the higher level, which we can tweak even deeper later on. And the nice thing about Logic Pro 10 is that it it is designed in such a way that when you first open it, the easier controls come up first. And if you want to get deeper in something, you can 
click on menus and go deeper, but you don't need them right away to get things done. So I, that's, as, a, as a new person to Logic uh, Pro 10, I didn't even need to crack the manual before I got this far and got you know, a project going that I really felt good about. So let's look at closer at the drummer track. Okay, so here I have a project that I started working on today. And as you can see, it has a different drummer and a different set of patterns and different settings. And these changes, like I said earlier, are region-based, and you can edit the drummer regions just as you would any other instrument region. And the drummer regions can be converted to MIDI if you want to get even tweakier with the individual instruments in the kit. So, but if you're a drummer like me, yeah, it's terrifying to know that this level of technology exists. But as a songwriter, drummer, the drummer application part of this program is way more valuable as a compositional tool than simply using a sample library or many of the other drum sequencers I've seen because of how intuitive it is to use and the level of results it gets by combining all these different parameters that just set things up right away. So the performances sound like what a real drummer would come up with as you tweak the regions. So at this point, I've chosen Nikki, my alternative drummer, and Nikki is playing a Detroit garage kit, but maybe I'm not crazy about the sound of the bass drum itself. So I can actually now go into the drum kit, which is this screen up here. You know, each drummer has a default kit uh, but the drum kit gives you the option of assembling a custom kit from Logic's outstanding sample library. And the drum kits are professionally mixed and sampled, so they sound great when you load them in right away. However, you can also go into the mixer and modify them further, just like as if you had a multi-channel uh, drum recording. But in this case, I can do a, little, uh, a few tweaks on the drum kit. So let's say that I want to swap out the uh, Detroit garage kit. I can just click on the bass drum. And now I've got three different choices for bass drum and they each have a different sound. This one's dead sounding. This one's, you can hear some snare sound in it. And I can each take each bass drum and tune it higher or lower with this knob, uh, increase or decrease the dampening, and then also subtract or add gain to it to fine tune the kit as it would sound, say, you know, as a, as a part of a larger ensemble of instruments. I can do the same thing with the snare drum. I click on the snare icon and it gives me three different snare sounds, as you can hear. Each one is slightly different. So this, this snare is a pretty lively one. This one's a dead one, but I can back the dampening control off to make it livelier. And I can also tune the snare drum or add more gain right here. When it comes to the toms, I can simply tune the toms up or dampen them or add gain to them. Same with the cymbals. I have the ability to add gain to the hi-hat, tune the pitch of the hi-hat so it makes it higher or lower, and the same, same with the uh, cymbal sounds. So in this case, I can sort of take what was the Detroit Garage Kit, and I've got three different bass drums and three different snare drums to choose from, plus tunable toms and tunable cymbals, kind of like in real life in a way. But Nikki doesn't have to play the Detroit Garage Kit. Uh, Nikki could just as easily play the Neo Soul Kit. So I just simply select it, I hit the space bar, and now you'll hear it in my project. And I'm going to solo my drum kit so you can hear it clearly. So I'll go from one kit to another. Uh, we'll back it off and hear Neo Soul one time. And then maybe we don't like that, we want to try the East Bay Kit. quite a different sound. Again, as you're developing your song, you might decide that you want something that's bigger and livelier or something that's tighter and uh, has less of that ring, uh, shell ring. And you know, you've got, how many kits do you have here? You've got quite a few kits to choose from here. Slow Jam, Smash, SoCal, Sunset, and so forth. And you can load them in real time and listen to them. Here's one that looks a little bit like something that John Bonham played, sort of a Vista Light Ludwig look. It's got a quite a bit bigger sound. And of course, you can dial in down here all the different details. Now, you might say, well, okay, I like the retro kit. I like the pattern I have. Let's try another drummer. Let's audition a drummer that's from the songwriter genre. And we, of course, can look at four different players here. And we'll go ahead and it says you're going to change the drummer, which means you're going to lose what you got now. But I'm going to take that risk. And there we have Levy. And Levy, of course, is playing something that looks like a, a, a Ludwig that a Ringo Starr would play. And we can listen to our pattern, or at least our song, with that drum kit. So let me go ahead and what I will do is I'll play my song back and switch between different drummers. You get a sense of how it changes here. So we'll start with Levy. So you can see he's got a little bit of swing. 
but maybe I'll try another different drummer that maybe doesn't have as much swing in their playing. This has no swing here. Okay. A little bit busier on the snare drum. We can change that by adding cymbals. Okay, so you can see right away that there is a lot of space for you know development with your song, with your instruments, and this is just from drummer itself and from the drum kit builder. So this alone is just a dynamite part of the upgrade for people like me who are trying stuff out, songwriting and things like that. Okay, here we're looking at our uh, basic MIDI instrument tracks, and you can see that, like GarageBand, we're looking at different icons for instruments. We've got a Fender Rhodes right here. We have sort of a, a mini Moog looking uh, synth lead here, and then we've got an upright, a generic upright bass here. We can get rid of these icons. We can reduce the size of the track and so forth. We're gonna solo the electric piano part and look at that right now. So if we listen to the electric piano on its own, we can go to the mixer and we can look that on the electric piano, I've got uh, a little bit of a micro phaser. I've got an audio effect of a phaser, which I can simply open the uh, folder up here and dial that in if I want, change aspects of the phaser or not. So I can, again, customize my instrument how I want. And in this case, we can look at our road section again. And you'll see I've got a few regions here. Okay, but if I'm not crazy about that sound and I want to change it, so we'll go ahead and play the instrument and I'll just pick a new one. We got suitcase mark four. We got we got a Wurlitzer. Classic world. We've got something called experimental, which has all kinds of more modified sound. Okay, so that's the kind of thing you'd expect to have in uh, one of these sort of libraries. That's fine. Another new feature in Logic Pro 10 are the MIDI plugins. Logic includes a number of plugins that enhance your MIDI performance. These plugins include an arpeggiator, a modulator, a transposer, a chord trigger, a randomizer, and even a scripter, which allows you to create a new MIDI engine by scripting your own uh, plug in here. I'm going to bring my keyboard out front here, and as my piano part plays, you can hear that now it's got a little bit of arpeggiation. I can turn that off, or I can put it back on. And the arpeggiation is based on the rate set here and the, the note order, the kind of variation you want and how many octaves are involved in the arpeggio. I mean, it's very common arpeggiator style, you know, uh, features, but in a sort of MIDI program. Another really cool feature in Logic Pro 10 is the track stack feature. We'll click right there to open up our synth stack. You can see here we've got lots of synths hidden under this one track here, and I can close it again. And this allows you to treat them as a collection. So this new feature allows you to consolidate and control a collection of any tracks, as well as to stack instruments to build layer sounds, as we've done right here. You can create a folder stack, which doesn't involve submixing, but you can also create a summing stack, which submixes the tracks into an aux channel. And this is uh, very easy and quick to create. And in addition, a summing, a summing stack can be saved and recalled as a patch in the Logic Pro 10 sound library. So let's go back to my previous project and we will create a summing stack. So in this project, what I want to do is I want to create a summing stack that involves the upright bass and the drums. So I can control them uh, with one movement of the volume control. So I will select the bass first, hold down shift and select the drummer track. Then I'm going to hold down shift and hit command D and it asks me at the top which kind of track stack do I want to create. So I've already selected summing stacks. I hit create and now you can see in the upper left corner I've got this aux channel control and when I go to the mixer now you can see that all three channels I've got my sum, I've got my upright bass and my, my Brooklyn drummer here are all put together. So when I move this fader they all move. Okay so that 
is the summing version. And I could just do the exact same thing with, the, with both keyboard parts or in, as in the previous uh, project, all the synth leads. Uh, I put the voices into one. It's a very, this stack capability is a very handy for mixing and uh, probably one that you'll end up using quite a bit. Um, patches can store these channel strip settings that we have, uh, smart control data, track stacks, and this allows you to build, save, organize, and recall complex instrument configurations, and even load them into Apple's main stage three program uh, for uses in your performance. Now, if we look at the instrument list over here, we'll go back to our instrument list, and this library is part of the cool content that Logic Pro 10 uh, comes with, which is over 800 sampled instruments, as well as 1,500 instrument and effects patches, 3,600 Apple loops, all inclu included in the price, the $199.99. Uh, the entire new and legacy content collection is included uh, in either Logic Pro 10 or Main Stage 3, and they share the same library. So once you install it from one app, the other sees it, as does GarageBand. So if you've got GarageBand, all this content is viewable and usable by all these programs. So Apple did a nice job of making it, you know, really user-friendly and being able to share content between projects you may have in different formats. In addition to the features we've talked about so far, the mixer has been redesigned so that the sections of the channel strip ref reflect uh, where the signal flow is. Uh, gain reduction meters have been added, all sorts of wonderful features. In this case, we've op opened up our track stack and you can kind of see how things spread out and that we've got Lots of effects on either one. We can look at the different kinds of effects. Apple has also redesigned the score editor, making it easier to use. We can go up here and just grab notes, move them around very easily. This is reflecting the uh, MIDI track that we've created earlier. With Logic Pro 10, you can use an iPad as your main controller by utilizing the free Logic Remote app. Logic Remote is compatible with an iPad mini, or the iPad 2 or later, but your iPad must be running iOS 6. And of course, you'll need to own Logic Pro 10. And most importantly, both the iPad and your computer must be able to communicate with each other over a Wi-Fi network. However, you can use uh, several different types of controllers. You can control the mixer with uh, faders and knobs. You've got the keyboard, piano keyboard style controller. You also have bass strings, you have a guitar fret, and if you uh, place your fingers on the fret, you'll hear the exact pitch. There's lots of stuff you can do with Logic Remote. Keep an eye on Electronic Musician Magazine and emusician.com in the near future for EM's review of Logic Pro 10. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in. My name is Gina Robert, and we'll see you next time.